Hello everybody, welcome back. Today's video is 100,000% inspired by Julia Adams. I went onto YouTube this morning as I do and I was scrolling through my subscriptions and I saw that Julia posted a new video where she basically spoke about her top three favorite products from every category. I absolutely love the video and I was very much inspired to do my own version of it. So thank you Julia for the inspiration. I will link her video in the description box down below in case you want to check it out. I'm obviously going to be talking about a lot of my favorite products today but I think you guys may be surprised with some of the products that I am choosing as my top three and I will also say that this is not like a standing list. This changes often. So I'm going to go through all the products in order of application just to keep things nice and easy for you guys to follow along. So starting off first with primer. Now I actually don't really use makeup primer all that often. I'm not against it. It's just not something that I always find is necessary for my skin. And oftentimes when I use a primer, my foundation just looks worse. There are very few primers out there that I find mesh well with most of the foundations that I use. And so more often than not, I will go with some type of skincare product as my primer, as my base before going going into my foundation. So the three products that I chose for my primer are all skincare-esque products just because that's what I use. So the first product that I wanted to mention is actually one that I don't have here right next to me unfortunately because it's in my vanity at my house because I use it literally every single day as I'm getting ready and it is a sunscreen from Super Goop. Now I was initially going to mention the glow screen because I love the glow screen. It's basically just a glowy sunscreen. It gives the skin a really gorgeous glow while of course also protecting it. This does have an SPF of 40, but I don't necessarily like to use the glow screen every single day because I'm not always in the mood for a super glowy look. And so while I use glow screen very often, the one that I use even more often is the Play sunscreen. Basically just a basic sunscreen. There's really no bells or whistles to it. It doesn't have like a silicone like texture, which the unseen sunscreen has. It doesn't have any glow to it, like the glow screen. It's just a normal cream formula. But what I love so much about this particular sunscreen is it feels, smells, and performs just like a moisturizer. And it also just doesn't disrupt my makeup. It's like it's not even there. But because it is so moisturizing, I find it does provide a really nice space for my foundation to sit on. So I've just been really, really loving it, especially for day to day. And that has been probably my most used and my most like go-to primer lately. Another product that I love applying underneath my makeup, especially when my skin is very dry, is the Biosauce Squalane and Vitamin C Rose Oil. I love putting oil on underneath my makeup, but I'm very particular with the types of oils that I like to use because I really don't want the oil, again, to like interfere with my makeup, to break it up, because that can happen if the oil is too oily <laughs> or if there are ingredients in it that will just obviously um, interrupt the makeup sitting on top of it. With this guy, I have zero problems with any foundation that I put on top of it. It does not break up my makeup, which is key. And it also just gives such a nice hydrating, but not a heavy um, veil of moisture onto my skin. So this is really fantastic. And another really beautiful product that I love, it, it's kind of in the same vein, is the Josemaran Pure Argon Milk Intensive Hydrating Treatment. What I really like about the Josemaran Pure Argon Milk is that it's more of a milky texture rather than an oily texture. So when I don't really feel like having a super oily finish on my skin, this is what I go to. And it still gives a lot of hydration, but it sinks in a little bit quicker than an oil does. That will also help my makeup just look really nice on my skin. So these have definitely been my top three primers. So now let's move on to the foundations. Two out of the three foundations that I have here are probably super obvious. One though I feel like is a bit of a wild card that maybe you guys didn't expect or wouldn't have expected because I haven't really spoken about it much on my channel but I've been using it a lot off camera. So let's start off with probably the most obvious. Yeah, I know. It's the Fenty Eavesdrop. Can I shut up about this? No, I can't because it's so freaking good. And I know Julia also mentioned this. So clearly I'm not the only one who's completely obsessed with this product. This has by far been my most used like day-to-day -day foundation pretty much ever since I got it into my life. This is just one of the most beautiful, natural looking and skin-like foundations that I've tried. And what is so beautiful about this is it really does look like skin when you apply it, but it still gives you some coverage. There are other more skin-like foundations that really give you that skin-like appearance, but they don't really 
give you a lot of coverage. They correct very lightly. This though gives it to you and that's why I really, really love it. I do feel like it completely cancels out all the redness while still maintaining a really, really healthy and natural look to my skin. It also lasts super well because this isn't a super glowy formula. I don't find that it like slips off of my face within an hour. It lasts from day all the way to night and it doesn't like separate or do anything crazy on my skin. It's just so good, you guys. It's so good. I can't get enough of it. And I'm probably gonna be using this for a very, very, very long time. Okay, MAC face and body. <laughs> another really, really obvious pick. It's another one that I talk about all the time. Um, MAC Face and Body has been a longtime favorite of mine. I feel like this is constantly going like in and out of my life. But the common theme is, is that I'm always bringing it back into my collection because it's just a foundation that I feel like I can never really truly live without. As far as coverage goes and as far as like comparing it to the Fenty Ease Drop, they are somewhat similar, but I do feel like the MAC Face and Body doesn't have as much coverage as the Fenty Ease Drop. So when I'm really going for a very natural look and I don't really want a ton of coverage, then this is definitely a beautiful foundation to go to. So my third foundation that I want to talk about is the medium to full coverage foundation that I've been loving. And that is the Dior Forever Skin Glow in the shade 2N. And if you're wondering my shades in the other foundations, Fenty Ease Drop is four and the MAC Face and Body C2. My expectations for this foundation were really high because I love the concealer in this collection so much. I really, really was hoping that it would give me a similar effect. And I love the Forever Skin Glow Concealer because it gives me full coverage, but it looks airbrushed. And the foundation pretty much does the exact same thing and that's why I can't get enough of it. This gives you medium to full coverage without the heaviness and it also has a really gorgeous, very healthy looking glow to it. Not an over the top glow where if you had oily skin you wouldn't be able to wear this, but it just gives you that little bit of natural sheen which I really, really love for my skin type. I do have a drier skin type and it just works beautifully for my skin. So these three foundations, top three for sure. Let's talk powder. Um, <laughs> I tried to think of three of my favorite powders right now, and I'm sorry guys, I couldn't do it. I only have one. I'm so sorry. I would be lying to you if I said that I had three powders right now that I'm loving as much as the Kosas Cloud set. I don't know what to say, guys. I'm in a deep, deep love affair with this powder. Yes, I've spoken about it a million times on my channel, but there's a good reason for it, okay? It's just so good. It's one of the best powders that I've tried in a while, and it's the only powder that I'm using. So top three for powder, no. There's just a top one, and it's this guy. <laughs> just to kind of sum it up, in case you haven't heard me talk about it yet, the reason why I love this powder so much is because it's so lightweight. Um, as somebody with dry skin, I find powder can make me look cakey very quickly. This does even look like it's there. And besides that, it also smooths my skin. It makes it look poreless. I even got this in a deeper shade to use as a bronzer and it's fantastic. So yeah, that's all I gotta say about that. Okay, let's talk concealer. Um, starting off first with my newest favorite, which is the e.l.f. Hydrating Camo Concealer Satin Finish. I feel like I'm so late to the party with this guy. I feel like everybody has been loving this and raving about this and I just, I, I didn't know. I didn't know, nobody really sent me a memo. And I don't know why you guys would play me like that because this concealer is fantastic. I actually find that this is very comparable to the Dior Forever Skin Correct Concealer, which is another one of my favorites here. So I'm just gonna combine the two right now. Pretty much said the reasons why I love the Dior Forever Skin Correct when I was talking about the foundation. But I find, again, it just kind of uh, gives me that high coverage, but it still looks natural and flawless underneath the eyes. And the e.l.f. concealer gives me a very, very, very similar effect. And then for my shades, I use one N in the Dior and light peach in e.l.f. For my light to medium more everyday concealer, Joe's Marad Vibrancy, I'm back on the train. This is another one very similar to like MAC Beast and Body. I feel like it comes in and out of my life constantly. It's just a concealer that I always go back to because I know it always treats me right. It gives you a nice medium coverage, but it will never look cakey or heavy. Heavy. It has this really beautiful almost skincare like glow, which I just find makes the under eyes look so healthy. It's the best way to describe it. And it's just one that I always, always go back to for those reasons. And currently that's what I've been using. So now let's talk bronzing products. Um, first, let's start off with a powder. 
The Quo Bronzing Powder in Cool Contour has definitely been a big favorite of mine, um, especially over the last couple months. I've been going in and out of, of using it. This is a drugstore bronzer that feels so high-end. It's a very, very smooth powder to the touch. So when you apply this to your face, there's no kickback or powderiness, so it doesn't over apply and it applies just very, very smoothly. The color is also a great color for my skin tone, so I love it for that as well. And it's just been my go-to powder bronzer. Then we have a cream bronzer bronzer here from Danessa Myricks. This is the power bronzer in the shade light. I was so pleasantly surprised with this bronzer. I really didn't know what to expect when I bought this. I hadn't really heard really anybody talk about this, but this is a gorgeous cream bronzer. It's really exactly what I like in a cream bronzer in one little compact. It has the perfect amount of pigment to it, so it's not too sheer where you have to build it up like a lot for it to be able to show up, but it's also not crazy pigmented where you have to be a little bit careful when you apply it. It's that perfect like medium pigmentation where it just applies and blends onto the skin very seamlessly. Color is also just gorgeous. I really love that it has a little bit more of an ochery yellow undertone. That's my preferred bronzer shade for my skin tone when I'm not super tan because I find it adds a very natural warmth to my skin without it being too obvious. And it also being a cream makes it look even more natural. So I've been loving this. I've been using it a ton and it just works great for me. My third favorite bronzer is definitely the Patrick Ta um, Cream Contour and Powder Bronzer Duo. And this one is in the shade She Sculpted. So this guy has both a cream and a powder in one compact, which I love because it makes it a very versatile product. And besides the actual formulas, which are obviously great, otherwise I wouldn't be mentioning it as one of my top three, I really love that you have more of a cool tone cream and a warmer powder shade. So you are able to use these on their own in two different ways, or you can use them together and it's not redundant. So it's not like you have one shade in two different formulas and it just kind of looks the same on the face. These two shades will give you two different effects. The cool toned cream will sculpt, the warm bronzer will warm up the face and you could use them separately and obviously you could use them together and I just love that about this. Now, as far as blush goes, I really only have cream formulas here because that's really all I've been wearing lately. I do love a powder blush, but right now it's spring outside. We're getting into summer. And when that season hits, I'm all about the creams and liquids. I did just do a video all about my favorite Sunkist blushes. All three of these were in there because they are my favorites. So um, the first one is from Tower 28 and it is the Beach Please blush in the shade After Hours. This is actually a blush that I never really would have thought that I would have been drawn towards or like because this isn't typically a color that I go to. It leans a little bit more on the plum side, but I find that it is so flattering. It really gives such a natural flush to the cheeks without looking too colorful. The Tower 20 blushes are also so easy to apply, especially for every day. I love just kind of tapping them on and blending them in with my finger. It just makes for a really, really quick and easy look, and that's why I love them. Another one of my favorites is the NARS Air Matte Blush in the shade Rush. Can't get enough of this. This is so different than any other cream formula that I've really tried. This is way more of a matte formula, whereas most creams definitely lean more on the glowy side or, or are very emollient. Tower 28 blush and this guy are totally on two ends of the spectrum. So when you apply this to the cheeks, it does have a little bit more of a powdery finish. So I do find that this actually lasts a little bit longer, especially for, for a cream blush because it doesn't slip and slide around too much. And the color is also absolutely beautiful. I love this like burnt coral shade. It, it gives you that kind of sunburnt look. Danessa Myrick's Ballet Slippers is another very similar color but in a completely different formula. This is a liquid blush. I do find that this is more of a long wearing formula especially compared to a lot of other cream and liquid products. I find it, it, it does act not so much like a stain but it does set down on the face similar to how a stain would. You can blend them out with your finger, a brush, or a sponge and you're not gonna have any issues. They're very very blendable and easy to work with so they really do last on the cheeks for the entire day which isn't always the case for a lot of cream blushes so it's really good. So now let's move on to the eyes and sock eyeshadows. I have not really touched eyeshadow palettes in a really long time. Pretty much the only thing that is touching my eyeballs are single eyeshadows. Um, I really have been loving just really easy eye looks, just putting one shade across my entire lid and blending it out and being done with it. It's quick, it's easy, and the shades that I have here give really beautiful effects, and that's what I've been using the most. So. Let's get into it. This is another product that I have been able to shut up about. It, it is the Kosas 10 Second Eyeshadow in Globe. This is 
the most beautiful like champagne gold eyeshadow. It has such insane shimmer and sparkle to it. This is a little bit of a strange formula. It's very, very liquidy. And when I first saw this, I was like, okay, there's no way this is going to last on my lids. But let me tell you, it lasts and it lasts so well. So as soon as you blend this out and it sets down, it does not move. On my eyelids at least, it does not crease, it doesn't go anywhere, it doesn't smudge, it just stays in place. And so not only is the color beautiful, but the actual formula is fantastic. So if you're looking for like just an intensely sparkly, gorgeous champagne lid, Globe is it, you guys. It is so freaking beautiful. Another one of my favorite, more sparkly, kind of like lighter lid shades is the MAC Pearl Longwear Paint Pot in the shade Let's Skate. So this is more of like an iridescent shade. It does have kind of like a pinky undertone. Once you actually blend it out onto the eye, it has just a very, very subtle gold to pink shift. So it doesn't even really look like you're wearing much on the lid, but then when the sunlight just hits the eye, it just shimmers in the most beautiful way. And the MAC Pay Pots are also inherently really, really long wearing. So this lasts beautifully on the lid for the entire day. For more of a matte look, I'm still really into the Smashbox Always On Cream Shadows. I kind of just play around with the different colors. Right now I am loving Amber, which is a gorgeous, more like ochre brown shade. I really do like more of an ochre yellow undertone to my brown eyeshadow. I just find it elevates it a little bit, makes it a little bit different um, than a typical neutral, warm, or cool tone brown eyeshadow. And I really just love how this looks as a wash all over the lid. I find it actually ties in really beautifully with bronzer. When I'm going for more of like a bronzy look, it, it makes my eyes also look equally as bronzy because it almost has the same undertone as my bronzer. And so it just looks really cohesive. So now let's talk brows. The first product that I have here is probably gonna be the most obvious because it's the one that I talk about the most and it is the M Cosmetics Brow Cream. This, as I've said many, many times before, is one of the best just lazy person's brow tool. So it is a very, very small little spoolie. You're able to completely fill in and set your brows at the same time and not just do it, but do it in a very precise way because um, the spoolie is so small. So I'm essentially able to get a completely filled in and set brow look in like three seconds because I just need to use this product and I basically just need to go like this and then I'm done. It is different than a normal tinted brow gel because you are able to be so precise because the spoolie is so small. And of course the formula is also different than a typical brow gel as well. It's not so gel-like, it's more of a, a cream instead. So it also fills in the brows more than a typical brow gel would as well. <laughs> How many times did I just say as well? Okay, so now we have my favorite brow pencil. And this is actually kind of crazy because I think this is one of the very first times that I have not mentioned the benefit precisely my brow pencil as my ultimate favorite precise brow pencil. This has kind of taken its spot, at least it has for the moment. Um, it is the Kosas Brow Pop Dual Action Defining Pencil. So this is a very, very teeny tiny, <laughs> I don't even know how to show this to you guys, Brow pencil has a very, very small tip that is shaped like a triangle. And so what's really nice about that is you are able to get very precise with the tip of the triangle, and then you can also fill in broader areas with the width of the triangle. Um, so I do find that it is fairly versatile. I've tried a lot of triangular brow pencils in the past, and I typically actually don't like them. This is the very first one that I not just like, but I really love because I find that I'm still able to be precise with it. A lot of the times I find triangular brow pencils, I can't be precise with them, which is why I don't like them. The formula is also obviously really nice. The pigment glides on very easily. I find I have to press super hard to get color to show up. And then my third favorite brow product is another Kosas product. This is the Air Brow uh, Brow Gel in Soft Brown. Honestly, this isn't really anything too crazy special. It just is my current go-to, more typical, tinted brow brow gel product <laughs> because if I'm not going towards this, then I will go towards something like this. It does what a typical tinted brow gel does. It very lightly tints the brows, but it also sets them in place. It doesn't make them crunchy though, which I really like. Honestly, like this doesn't blow me out of the water. It's not the best brow gel I've ever tried. I just find it's good, it's easy. It also doesn't over apply the tint, which can sometimes be a bit of a mess with some tinted brow gels and it just like works. It's just a good tinted brow gel. Brow products really just don't excite me. <laughs> they just don't. So it's hard for me to get like super excited over them. Really the only brow product that like gets me, gets me going 
is the brow cream from M Cosmetics. We are almost done. Um, let's talk about lip products. This one is definitely a little bit difficult because I feel like lip products is one category that I really switch around the most. I'm constantly just pulling lip products out of my collection and using them, but the ones that I've been going back to the most lately have been these three. I've rediscovered one of my favorite nude lipsticks, which is this L'Oreal Color Riche Plump Shine lipstick in 107 Coconut Plump. This is what I'm wearing on my lips right now. It is a beautiful, beautiful, soft, beigey pink. The formula is also what takes, you know, this more basic color a little bit more over the top for me. It's more of a glossy formula. It is also on the sheer side, but it's also not streaky. So super comfortable and it does also have a really nice minty sensation to it, which I know a lot of people don't like. I personally really love minty sensations on my lip products. I find it just kind of feels really nice. For my gloss, I am so in love with this gloss from Kaja. This is the gloss shot in the shade Honey Drizzle. This is basically the exact same color as this lipstick, just in a gloss form. So the color paired with the lipstick is obviously perfect because they're very, very close in shade. The formula of this gloss is so nice. It's very, very buttery and gel-like, and it's not sticky at all, and it gives amazing shine to the lips, so I have been able to stop wearing it. Now, on the days that I don't really wanna wear a full-on lipstick, I have been going the most towards the Kapari Lip Glossy Lip Balms. They're not really anything too crazy exciting, they're just hydrating lip balms. I do have a couple of these. I do have tints to them, which I do really like. This one in particular is the clear one, which I love just as much. I just find these to be very hydrating. I like how glossy they make my lips as well, um, and they smell amazing. They smell like cake. Okay, the very last category that I'm going to talk about today is going to be my three favorite lip liners right now. So when it comes to lip liners, I am always looking to just naturally kind of contour my lips. And so I'm always looking for a color that is more on the neutral side, but does lean a little bit more cool tone. And these three are my current favorite, more neutral, cool toned lip liners that I find do a really great job of contouring my lips to make them look more plump. So the first one that I have here is a classic, it's MAC Strip Down. And this is probably one of my ultimate favorite just neutral lip liners. It's just the most perfect medium toned neutral color. This goes with almost every single uh, nude lip product that I have in my collection. So it's a great one to have. One of my newer favorites has been the Huda Beauty Lip Contour 2.0 in Warm Brown, which is similar to Strip Down, but it definitely has more of like a pinkier undertone. And the formula of this guy is also very, very creamy. And I find it glides on the lips with literally zero effort at all. And then the third favorite that I have here is one that I constantly go back to. I've had this in my life for a long time. It is the Makeup Forever Artist Color Pencil in the shade Limitless Brown. This is definitely more of a deeper, cool-toned brown. But it's a beautiful contour color. It works so well and make your lips look really big. Hi, future Jamie here. Excuse the very unpleasant background, but I was literally in the middle of editing and I realized that I did not talk about mascara. What's wrong with me? Of course, I had to jump off my phone and show you guys the three mascaras that I have been loving lately. So I think my number one current favorite mascara right now is the Lancome Lash Idol Mascara. This stuff kind of checks all the boxes for me. It lengthens, it volumizes, it separates, and it also lifts my lashes. As you can see, it has a very, very slight curve, and I find that it does a really good job of literally lifting up and curling my lashes without having to use a lash curler because it is pretty spiky and it's kind of spikier towards the end over here. It really helps to flare out and separate my lashes, and it just gives my lashes truly like a butterfly type of look. On the days that I don't really care to have the most dramatic looking lashes, I want something a little bit more on the natural side and that also will be easy removal. The M Cosmetics Pick Me Up has been a go-to of mine for a while now. This is a tube mascara, meaning it actually comes off with just water. So at the end of the day, when you're ready to take it off, you just take a little bit of water, you, you massage your eyes and it'll come off in clump. I especially love this mascara on my lower lashes because I know that I won't have to worry about it smudging. That is a benefit to a tube mascara you don't have to worry about it really going anywhere or like creating any type of raccoon eye situation so if you have really bad issues with mascara smudging on you try a tube mascara like the m cosmetics pick me up and it will solve your problem another new favorite of mine is the say 101 mascara this mascara is so adorable because the wand is so small and because it is so small i really find i'm able to be very precise with the way that I apply it, I'm able to get to like all my little individual lashes. And so I'm able to get a really nice lengthy and again, very separated look. And I also really like the little spiky tip that it has because I'm able to turn the wand this way and 
define my lashes really precisely with that little tip. So those are my top three mascaras. So you may have noticed that I did not talk about highlighters today. And so while there's a lot that I like even right now, I, I don't wear it enough for me to be like, okay, these are definitely my favorites because I use them the most because just generally speaking, I just don't wear highlighter that often because a lot of my other makeup products give me the glow that I'm looking for. That is it for today's video. I really hope that you enjoyed hearing about my top three favorite products in almost every category. Don't forget to let me know your thoughts in the comments. Let me know your thoughts on all the products that I spoke about today and even some of your favorite top three products. I would love to hear them. Hit the thumbs up button if you did enjoy today's video and subscribe if you're not subscribed already. Already, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.